Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing something very special and I am doing Artist Talk. So this is a new series that I'm introducing onto my YouTube channel where I get some amazing talented artists from all different art backgrounds to come on and share their passion. So today I have the amazing talented Stacy, <laughs> I'm from Calais Creations and I'm a self-taught textile artist and illustrator and I like to do um, watercolor designs, digital art uh, for clients and I love to turn my art into uh, textile art which I'll just, I've got a little example here and it goes on to swimwear, active wear, uh, anything you can think of, baby wear, um, yeah but they're my passions and I like to teach people about that also in my spare time. So. Perfect. Mm. So today we're going to be learning a little bit about Stacey's art as well as learning how to do some watercolors. I've never done watercolors before, so I'm pretty excited about this. Um, Stacy also teaches watercolors in her workshops. I'm gonna put all of her information and how to find her on the link below. So let's get started. Thanks, Sherry. I'm excited. <laughs> So, um, in, well, in my watercolor workshop, I teach a range of, of, of techniques as well. So, um, you can have any kinds of paints uh, and brushes and things like that to suit your budget. But if if you're on a student budget, you know you can always um, you don't have to use these particular supplies I'm mentioning. These are professional grade, but any art store will have a student range, so you can just uh, look online for that or talk to your local art store. But in my workshop, I love to use these uh, Prima Marketing Ink watercolor confection sets. So these come in a range of different uh, colors. Uh, there's little kits you can get. I think there's like nine different ranges. There's tropical. There's essence. There's um, like skin colors. All kinds of. Um, you know, there's pastel ranges, all sorts of things. So in my workshop, um, I love to provide these. So we all get to open these up on the day. So cute. Very super cute. And we all get to do a little swatch uh, test so we can uh, paint and uh, see what color they all turn out to be. So that's a little bit of fun in the workshop. But I did bring one that I've already prepared earlier. And as you can see, I've already, I've got quite the collection. So these are professional gray. Um, and my palette's a little bit on the messier side there, but <laughs> I think every artist's palette's always on the messier <laughs> yes. side. Yes, I'm not one for cleaning it. I just love, I love the, the craziness of it. So I've got four different sets in there. So it's a nice color range. You don't yeah. have to uh, spend a lot of your time color mixing if that's not your strength. So my other great big tip for artists out there is always work to your strength. So I'm self-taught. Um, so sometimes I might not have that color theory. So you know what? Why not just buy a ready-made one and ready to go? Um, and it also means yeah. that you're not having to like remake that color up again and again exactly. when you run out if you are doing a larger piece because yes. it's just there. Exactly right. And, and it's that consistency as well um, so yeah you might not have that same consistency if you're remaking it so yeah. that's perfect um, for myself I actually don't spend a lot of money on brushes um, it's probably a great place to invest but I just tend to, to go on the more cheaper side so there's these beautiful fun aqua brushes if you've ever seen those Sherry you can fill them up with water mm. and then you can just squeeze the water out um, onto your that's really brush. cool oh no <laughs> I'll my that one. and then there's a range of other um, round brushes square brushes it all just depends on what your what you're needing so um, smaller thinner round brushes are really great for detail yeah. your broader brushes are really great for just covering that page so, and do you just buy these at any sort of art supply store yeah um, I myself loved I, I don't know are we allowed to say but yeah. I love to shop at Eckersley's um, so there's a lot of local stores um, throughout Brisbane at Eckersley's um, there's a great place online called the mixed media store yeah. I think that's Melbourne based um, but that's actually where you can buy these watercolors these tropical watercolors uh, there's always eBay but I love to you know support local and support yeah. small where I can too so always try those avenues first and then paper the, uh, the next thing you really want to um, focus on and this is a great place to invest is paper so it's all about the thickness of your paper um, and you want to have um, a, a thick watercolor anywhere from 200 GSM up um, 300 GSM is, is on the thicker side and I think cold press is really nice it's a nice it has a nice texture so you can really see the, that watercolor soaking in and the texture underneath uh, your, your prints so the one I like to use is Winslow Aquarel and this is 200 GSM and this is um, sort of I'd say probably middle of the road expenditure you can you can spend a lot more on your paper um, but it's a great place to start anyway. So GSM just basically means the thickness of your paper yes. and 
quality. Yes, yes. that's as I as I understand it. And um, yet you wouldn't want to paint watercolor on normal paper. It just uh, the effect is not there. The the watercolor the pa normal paper just goes um, grayish and um, crinkles yeah. under that under that water application. And doesn't the water kind of just pull on top? It doesn't sit, soak in like the way it does on this sort of paper. Yeah, it, it, it's it's definitely not pleasant or as exciting. You don't see the flow of the of the watercolor yeah. being absorbed into the paper and yeah like you said it does sort of sit on top but once it dries it's flat it's unexciting and yeah you just you wouldn't want to be um yeah presenting that to clients or even just in your frame at home if you're, if you're yeah, doing so it for a hobby it's yeah. worth to just invest in some quality paper yes just definitely the paper out of any, anything i think yeah. and then then you can work your way up through your paint range as you go yeah. um, but the tropical the these tropical watercolor sets are about 36 dollars something like that so, so and they last a long time it's not too bad compared to other uh hobbies like i know with resin yeah. everything's very yeah. expensive Yes. So to buy pad paper and some watercolors is a lot cheaper than buying yes. a resin kit. <laughs> it is. I've dabbled in resin, so I completely agree. It's a much <laughs> better, much more budget. affordable hobby. It's more friendly for my wallet. So, yes. Yeah. So that's perfect. And then, um, yeah. Do we want to do a run through? Do yes. you want to join in the run through as well, or do you want me to just do that? <laughs> Put you on the spot, Sherry. I think we'll we'll do it together. We'll we'll watch you, and then we'll see me, which I've never done watercolors and it's been quite a while since I've done any sort of drawing or painting because I'm great. generally quite abstract with my designs uh, so yeah we'll get started into the demo yes and the different basic techniques so we'll cover that first and if there's time we might be able to look at how to do a, a leaf or a rose that's always very exciting for new watercolor artists to try out yeah and so this is what you do in your workshops that you run yes exactly right we start off with some basics um, all right, everyone. So we're just going to go through some of the basic techniques that I like to teach everyone in my watercolor workshop. So they're just uh, my take on it as well, remembering that I'm self-taught and this is just my approach. So you're very welcome to, of course, you know, keep researching this and develop your own style and your own understanding of things. Uh, but uh, one of, uh, there's a couple of my favorite techniques on here. I think my favorite, if we can see here, is wet on wet, but we'll start with our, our wet on dry. So what that really is meaning is we're going to use a, a wet paintbrush and, and, and a more wet uh, paint and we're going to uh, put that onto the dry paper so we're keeping the paper dry so what I like to start to do is always just dip my paintbrush in a little bit of water just uh, as the water obviously helps activate the yeah. paint right so we just do a little bit of a, a dip in there and then we pick our favorite color so I'm going to pick this blueberry color here and you just want to load up your brush so you've got you know quite a healthy amount on there it's quite wet and then we're going to just paint a square onto our paper or any shape that you like, just so you can see how it activates. So with wet on dry, there's a little bit more control involved. As you can see, the paint's not flowing everywhere. It's just painting where I tell it to paint, but you're able to see the wet sheen and um, yeah, yeah, mostly it's just about controlling where it is and you're able to get that coverage. So at any time, Sherry, if you want to join in, feel yeah. free and you can do other shapes and see what it's like. I'm going to try this lilac -y colour. That's pretty. Definitely you. <laughs> and the more water you have, the yeah. more, you know, like diluted that paint colour is going to be as well. So you can even wet your paintbrush again and come in here and you can still see that my, there's still some colour on my brush and it's a lighter tone now because I've just applied more water. So the more water, the more diluted the color, uh, but there's still that level of control there. How are you finding it? It's cool. It's been a while since I've held a paintbrush. <laughs> it's a good square you're doing there. <laughs> and then if you decided to dip your paintbrush now, just mm -hmm. in the water and then put it back again on your paper, you'll see, um, like, and then and make a new shape. You can make oh. an, a new one. You can see that color change oh, there, yeah. so it's a lighter, a lighter tone. So you've, you've got options to play with when you're painting. It doesn't always have to be that dark look. So that's wet on dry. 
And then I like to, the my favorite is wet on wet. So uh, this one we can be quite, you know, definitely liberal with our water. We want to put a lot of water on there and, oh, sorry. And then, silly me, I'm doing wet on dry again. Then we can actually just paint the water straight onto our papers in any shape you like. So again, I'll just choose a square here and I'm putting lots of water in there. And then I'm gonna use a wet brush and then I'm gonna put it in the paint, grab a lot of paint so it's very wet. And when you dab it in, you start to see um, there's a flow. So you want more water, it's not moving as much. Um, depends sometimes on the different paints you have. You can, so you can see it's getting a bit of flow there, but it's all about just spreading it over a bit. I'm not really controlling where the paint's going. It does splitter and splatter around if we can see that and it's more textured. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so the more water you it add disperses. in. It disperses. It disperses, yeah. And if you keep dropping drips on as well, that's another little technique to put in. The water moves it, disperses it, and you don't really have a way of, there's less control involved and it'll dry, yeah, with textures. And that's, see, that's perfect. You yeah. can do spots and splotches and it just changes up how it's gonna dry. So that's my favorite uh, technique there. And then we've got dry on dry. So this one is, um, dry on dry is really good for putting in those details. Um, Cause watercolor painting can be a little bit about layering. So you want to start with your, when you're making a picture or a flower, you'd be starting with light tones and light coverage like this one here. And you'd be building up through to a dark color yeah. here. And then you would tend to use your dry on dry for um, the dark details. So if I was doing um, a leaf, for example, um, if I just quickly, just as, a, as an idea for you, I'm not going to make this too wet, but just pretend that's our leaf shape. When we do dry on dry, we do need a little bit of water still just to activate our brush, but a, a lot less. And then we'd be dipping in so it's a bit more dry paint coming on. It's not so flooded with water, if that makes sense. And then, uh, so you can see it's a firmer line, more control, and you get those white scratches in there from the paper coming through. So that's the dry, the benefits of the dry on dry. It's just helping you add that, that detail. Yeah, it creates a really cool technique and detail to it. Exactly, exactly. And so it's really great to use, sometimes depending what you're painting, but um, a very small, brush of this size. I've got here a Winsor & Newton double zero. So that's really fun. So if I, for example, just show you now, even with that, you can see the different kinds of thin lines you can create. Cool. Alrighty. So then we can move on to a graded wash. So these are really fun. Um, sometimes if you're wanting to create a landscape pattern uh, or a nice pretty bookmark, but just with uh, great, let's say, when we say graded, we mean that it's gonna go from a wash that's dark um, down to light. So I like to do these starting off with a wet on wet approach. So I like to, I like to put um, the, the water down on the paper first and, our water's getting a little bit dirty here, but at home you would change this and make it clean if you're trying to use a different color, but I'm gonna stick here with the same color. So I've got my rough shape of where I want my wash to be, and then I'm going to apply the paint to the top. You see it's quite dark there, and I'm just gonna start adding more water and just bring that slowly down to a more lighter, a lighter approach here. So you can see how that could yeah. look really good for a sky. And then, yeah, you would have clean water and just keep adding and bringing it down. Then you would come in back over the top and start adding some more dark just to really blend that and, and show that difference. So that's a graded wash. So it's going from dark through to light, or you can make it go from light to dark, all that kind of thing. All right. So then our next one we have is a variegated wash here. And what a variegated wash is when um, two different colors in a wash kind of come together to create a third unique color. So with that one, I, I like to sort of demonstrate it in this way. So again, uh, our water is a little on the uh, dark blue color <laughs> side here, but you would put your water down and it's on the lighter side. And this is where I would need to do a color change. So we've got 
water going down and, and I just imagine I would be adding blue to this so it's got this blue tone but let's say then I wanted to add a pink color to this so of course when you're wanting to change your colors you always want to rinse out your brush as well so this will still be a little bit on the blue side I'll squeeze some out there but we'll, we'll risk it we'll grab this pink here and we start just sort of putting some dots in here you can, you can do any kind of show, I could half color it in, whatever you want to do, but this will blend eventually to create like a pretty purple color. It's a third color. So it's not quite this pink that I apply. It's not the blue, but it changes to a third color. So this is good when you're painting leaves sometimes yeah. and adding those little bits of texture to the leaf just to give it a little bit of pop. Yeah, because you can always see it like starting to blend. Yeah, and it takes on its own shapes and definition. Like again, this is where you have not as much control over what the yeah. paint's doing. So that's how it adds a bit of like dimension to it. Exactly right, exactly right. So that's really fun for florals. Um, Basically, you just add. Sometimes you'll do flowers, and, and you'll you you'll paint the outer of the flower, and then you put just the little dots in the middle, and it just adds something. It yeah. just adds, like you said, variation. I've seen, um, people do it when they paint like a moon. Mm, and then they do mm -hmm. the dots in it because it adds that like texture. Texture, the yeah. yeah, beautiful. That's exactly right. So then the last and probably one of the more important techniques is just that layering yeah. side of things. So that's what we were su uh, suggesting when you're making a picture. You often you have to plan it out in your mind uh, where there's white in the picture you would just there's no such thing as really a white watercolor yeah. so you would leave that space blank uh, but again it's about building from those light tones up through to the dark so for example um, if I just pick stick with my little blue color you, you'd be wanting to start quite light so we want we'd want to have a lot of dilution so more water than paint is what that means and then if you feel you've gone a bit too dark just always keep adding water into that so and the thing with watercolor is you need a level of patience as well. So with layering, if you know that your flower start, starts, there's, there's light shades in your flower, you need to paint those first and then let them dry completely. And then you can then go over the top and add the next layer yeah. of coloring. So we would wait. Do we want to wait? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can edit that bit out, hey. Um, or because if I see if I pick up another color it, it'll blend mm. which is a nice technique too but it doesn't show the layering as well <laughs> so you can just put me on silent for this bit <laughs> so sometimes you can use maybe I'll say that bit sometimes you can use a hairdryer at home or a heat gun there's some hand letters and things yeah. that have those hand guns you can dry that so you don't have to be as patient as waiting for the air to dry <laughs> or if you live in queensland during summer it will dry pretty fast exactly. i can imagine yes that is very very true <laughs> i'll leave the windows open often when i when i paint some other great tips here too um you know you can actually pin down the sides of your painting so when you're painting it doesn't crimple because even you can see here even with this thickness of paper the the paper still does get a little, yeah. a few little rises and bumps, which yeah, it's, it's, it's not the end of the world, but if you just do want to have something to go straight from your desk into a frame, you can yeah, pin down the sides with some masking tape or some washi tape, and then you'll be ready to go. Um, just peel it off when you're finished and uh, transfer to a frame and it'll be as flat as possible. So that's enough time now here yeah. for it to dry. Um, so then, I would be wanting to put um, a darker layer over the top of this. Uh, so I might just paint a triangle over the top of here. So you'd probably be wanting to have more, less of a dilution with the next yeah. layer. Um, so I've got more paint, less water here, and I just paint my triangle and you can see how it's laid over the top. So there's still, you're still able yeah. to see a little bit of that original paint under there, but I'm able now to successfully paint over the top of that and a new little sort of color develops in there as well, but you can see it's, it's yeah. layered, it's, it's building the picture. 
It looks really cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much um, my top techniques. There's other ones you learn as you go along, blending, pulling. Um, there's some great YouTube videos or Skillshare videos out there as well um, that you can look up, but um, these are some ones that will definitely help you get started and to get by and paint some really beautiful creations. What are the other sort of art styles that you are into at the moment? Uh, for myself, really, um, it I like to also dabble in digital art, so creating illustrations on my iPad mm -hmm. using the Procreate app. So I've just been experimenting uh, there with the different ways you can use that application to create sort of cartoon characters or different kinds of floral patterns. Sometimes it's almost for me easier to use the iPad to yeah. create a realistic look. It can be really hard to master realistic uh, florals and leaves in watercolor. I'm still on my journey with that. <laughs> I'm getting better every day. But I, for me, I think it's easier on the iPad. So uh, if that's something of interest, yeah, check that out. Um, the yeah, app's not very expensive. You just have to have an iPad. <laughs> You also create um, a lot of patterns for other brands and do a lot of like brand design. I've yes. seen it all over your Instagram, okay. um, like having your digital prints put on to bikinis and I've seen them on like candles and yeah, there's a bunch of different applications that you've been like. Yeah, thank you for reminding me, <laughs> Sherry. Um, yeah, basically, um, yeah, using either your watercolors or your iPad designs, you can uh, turn them into, I think what's more broadly known as either textile art or sort of, I think it's gaining more traction, is surface pattern design. Yeah. So yeah, I really like to play in that space. So that's often where you'll use programs like Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, and you'll manipulate your artwork into repeat patterns, and they can then be printed onto rolls of fabric um, and yeah turned into swimwear uh, turned like we were saying before in the introduction into activewear I've been really fortunate to work with some brand small small business brands with their releases so I'm very excited about those so keep an eye on my Instagram for all of those as they come out that's Cali underscore creation <laughs> uh, on Instagram and yep small businesses also like to use me for either the candle label or product packaging yeah. design so that's really fun too so you can apply these patterns or just individually the artwork and you can turn it into a label for a, a pretty candle range so yeah it's pretty much endless once you know how to draw something and then how to uh, manipulate that in Photoshop and and do things with that the world is your oyster pretty much in terms of designs so before we get started on creating this beautiful rose I am just going to ask you guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and give it a like because it also helps YouTube share this to everyone else and lets YouTube know that this is a popular video. And if you are new to my channel and you want to see more of these artist creation videos, then give me a subscribe and don't forget to click the little bell notification so that way you can get notified every single time I post a new video. So what are you going to show us now? Okay, so um, something I've learned from my watercolor workshops and got a lot of feedback on is people love to know how to do florals and mm -hmm. um, botanicals and leaves or palm trees. So yeah, I thought I could just show you um, some techniques around how to make a basic leaf shape and also how to make a rose, um, a watercolor rose in, in a loose leaf style. There's different, yeah. as we were talking before about realistic versus loose florals. Um, loose florals are a lot easier to start your journey with and then you can approach that realistic, <laughs> a very detailed a painting. But yeah, so yeah and you've got and some roses. examples there. Yeah, sure. So um, we may not do these exact particular yeah. leaves, but yeah, these are some leaves. That's once really started. beautiful. I love the like, the diff like the little blending of the colors through it as yeah. well because it makes it look like a more of a realistic leaf. Exactly, and then um, maybe later we can zoom in, but there's a lot of texture in there as well yeah. with the wet on wet technique. It's dried, so there's um, yeah, just a, a different ripple of color going through there. Um, you can, in the loose leaf style, you can start doing peonies as well. So, so it's beautiful. sort of an advance on like the little rose shapes yeah. you can do. So it's, it's never ending. There's wreaths that you can, oh, well, you know, wreaths or um, floral bunches you can do as well. 
So yeah, it's just never, never ending. This one, which is so pretty. <laughs> one of my favorites. I've used that in a textile design, and that's that's gone on to be on purses and things, which yeah. is very exciting. Ladies' clutches. Yeah, and then there's all of these like examples of the different styles. Yeah. So we'll, this would be more probably some of the leaves I can show you to do yeah. today in the rows there. So we'll we'll have a look at that now. All right, everyone. So we'll start off by showing a basic leaf shape. This is always a fun one in the watercolor workshops I host and um, always very appreciated because not everyone knows you can do certain movements with your brush to create different shapes uh, so it's less work for you in the long run but yeah let, let's so we'll do a basic a basic leaf so you want to start with a bit of a you can choose here your technique of choice whether it's wet on dry or wet on wet I might start this one with wet on dry meaning I'm going to wet my paintbrush and then I'm going to dip it into paint here um, I'm going to pick a green color that you can hopefully see. So we're doing wet on dry. And a great tip is to, uh, what you want to do is start painting with the tip of your brush and with a light pressure. And then you want to push down to the belly of your brush and then up again to the tip of your brush. So it's up, down, up, and that'll help create a leaf shape. So I'll just demonstrate now. So we're using a light approach with the tip pushing the belly down and then up light again and you can see um, you can fill in any gaps that may not have uh, come through but that'll be a basic leaf shape there so that looks really pretty against roses and things uh, in your loose floral techniques and then you can do a double-sided leaf so same approach you're doing the tip of your brush with a light and then pushing down with the belly and then up again light and then you can do another belly belly brush uh, pushing the belly down and around to create a different kind of look you, if you're not quite happy with that you can just fill in anything you like this is the beauty of watercolor things can be as messy or as neat as you like and then you've got all kinds of variations of leaves you can do so you can paint something with a stem that's quite thin and then you can do little, little circle or half circles coming off. Basically, your imagination is really the only limit. So you just have a play around, but it's always great to use the tip of your brush when trying to do something, a thinner line or something smaller in detail. And then you can use the belly to start coloring in and adding some more. Um, I guess paint, covering more ground with your paintbrush. And then the next little thing we can show that's very popular is a rose. So you can grab it any color you like. I love to use this little pink color over here. And I like to start off with, it's, it's like a, a open bracket and a full stop and a closed bracket. And you kind of just keep doing some open brackets around the page. And I'm using the tip and a little bit of the belly at times just to push down. And then you wanna use some water and wash off your brush so it's clean. And then you can start shimmering in closer to, to your paintbrush and helping, sorry, <laughs> shimmering in towards your picture. And you can start seeing some of that paint washing out into your water and you can add little bits, more little bits in and just more water I'm approaching into where you've last painted and that'll help push that out. So is this making the bigger petals? Yes, that's right. Uh, thanks, Sherry. Yeah, it's just making a sort of really abstract, almost looking almost, isn't it? Um, sort of very loose, very messy kind of floral and it's it, I've built it out with water around here but it's still got that you know that mm, the structure very, yeah and very um that's the part that makes it very obvious that's a rose and you can just add little drips and drabs of other colors in between but when you actually do look at different roses they their um, petal shapes are can be so different mm, that's right and and it's all just your interpretation so nothing has to be perfect that's what's beautiful about the roses the other kinds you can do you can you can just keep instead of this is more of a wash you can kind of just keep using um, like be a bit more liberal with the paint 
so it's less washy more I'm more telling the brush what to do and you can just keep building it out like that so and you use the base of your brush the belly so that's also another another technique you just keep building it out how roses kind of just there's lots of white space in them and you just keep adding in darker patches or going over the top adding blobs of water in to make it more exciting there's no real hard or fast rule as long as you're just sort of following this kind of approach we're building up half and then the other half and if that kind of makes sense yeah yeah. And also when you look at a petal too, it's not just one complete colour, it's a fading of colour, so... Exactly, the light could be hitting it in different places and um, all those kind of things. So you can just play around, nothing has to look perfect. And then, for example, you would then apply, you could put your, your leaf coming out of the rose here. And then you're on your way to creating a masterpiece. <laughs> you just build in all the gaps. But see, I'm just doing it quick and messy and no one knows any different. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be really great for when you're a beginner. It's very forgiving and just lots of fun. So I really hope you guys can practice along at home and try all of these techniques out and yeah any questions you might have feel free to always just touch base with me via instagram or email which will go over all those details yeah. soon <laughs> thanks thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave it in the comment box below and i will be happy to answer them for you and if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe i want to thank stacy for coming thank in you. today and sharing your skill set and your knowledge i know everyone will have enjoyed it just as much as i have thank you and if they want to contact you, where can they contact you through? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having mm -hmm. me. It's been a pleasure. Um, and yes, to get in touch with me, you can contact me through, um, firstly, all my most favorite places, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm available at, at, it's at Kali underscore creations. So that's Kali with K-A-L-A-I-I, -I, Kali underscore creations. Or you can visit me on my website and submit an inquiry form or an email. And um, my website is www.calicreations.com. That's yeah. pretty much it, Cherry. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so um, feel free to go and give Stacey a follow. And also she does, you know, a bunch of workshops. So if you are in the Brisbane area, make sure you go and check her out for all workshop dates as well as you do a lot of textile design. So, you know, if that's something else that you're interested in or you want to buy one of your amazing designs, then you. make sure you go and check her out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you, bye.